How's it going gamers? Another day, another video. So in this one, um, I'm going to be talking about Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, me personally, got it PS4, bought it brand new, bought it digitally, paid 50 quid for it, no regrets. Out oh, is because there was one particular YouTuber out there who was hyping this up, has been for God knows how long. Um, he was he ended up with a copy of the game before anybody else. He played it on the PC, he did two little parts to that. And then once he'd done that and the game had come out and the negativity was spewing, he jumped on that train and started describing the game as unbreakable. Um, I think that's a pretty unfair way of describing CD uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, at the end of the day, as always on this channel, we're not affiliated with anybody. There's no favouritism that comes in to play or anything like that. If we see a, a shoddy product, we'll criticise it. If we see a brilliant product, we'll praise it. We're on the fence when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, which we'll get into into a moment, but I have yet to see anything I would personally describe as game-breaking. Um, and by that, let me run an example by you. I ended up buying Fallout, and I ended up days and days and days into the game. I get to the point where I've been playing as the Brotherhood, and we're about to destroy the Institute. If you've been on this quest yourself, you'll know what I'm on about. You end up, with, you're on the, the outside, you've got a Sentinel Prime there, he's getting ready to kick off. Whatever he does, I don't know, because that's where Fallout 4 became broken for me. Because Sentinel Prime wouldn't move, uh, there was no way to get this quest going, the quest itself was bugged. Now, unfortunately for me, I hadn't saved it anywhere manually. It had always been auto-saves. So any of the auto-saves I wanted to load up had load me up in the same area. There was no going back anywhere. I'm halfway through this quest now. It's attacked the Institute or nothing. So my only option then in that game was to start from the very, very beginning or wait until Bethesda release a patch for this um, the situation I'm in so the actual mission continues and then Sentinel Prime starts throwing his nukes and we actually, you know, destroy the Institute that to me was very, very game breaking that was the very, very definition of game breaking to me, because my game was broke and there was nothing I could do about it until Bethesda sorted it out could have been a week down the line could have been a couple of years down the line for all we know because it's bug Bethesda so that to me is game breaking you driving down the street in an open world game and your car falls through the freaking map until either the car blows up or you die or it resets itself back onto the level itself, you know, onto the street. That's not game breaking. That's not that's not game breaking. Getting into a firefight, you know, and shooting up five flipping robots or whatever you want to call them, depending, gangers, whatever. And then um, suddenly your stupid PlayStation blue screens. That's not game breaking. I don't get it. I don't. I don't. I, where did these? No. So yeah, at the moment, me personally, I've yet to see anything game breaking in um, Cyberpunk 2077. Um, so basically, I'm going to tell you about the pros. The stories in this game are phenomenal. Um, you've got a couple of main stories you can go through. You've got um, a lot of side quests. I mean, I've got a lot of side quests, and I've, I'm guaranteeing I've got a lot to come up uh, yet to, you know, experience, yet to encounter. So, by the looks of it, there's a hell of a lot of side quests. You're getting money, XP, this, that, and the other rewards, and that lot for doing all of them. But also, you have minor ones that are like run from A to B. Uh, you do it, you get some cash, get some experience, that's that done. And then you've got others that really send you into parts of Night City that you wouldn't even think of. You end up helping out people, you know, you end up working with people and things like that, doing little bits of um, detective work and investigations, uh, you know, putting uh, the frighteners on people and this, that and the other, convincing them things that they're doing are wrong, whatever. But you're basically going out there and meeting um, an entire set of characters way beyond the main story. And that's important because not only is the story brilliantly written for the actual campaigns themselves and a hell of a lot of these side quests and also the gigs that you come across, but also the characters themselves are really, really brilliantly written. You end up, you know, um, really connecting, shall I say. And that's strange because 
you know, a lot of the people in Cyberpunk feel uh, not just human but also inhuman because of the amount of modifications they've gone through when it comes to enhancing the bodies with prosthesis and cybernetics. Uh, you come across some people and they just look so less organic and more robotic than anything, and yet they'll feel so human in the way they express themselves. Um, I don't really want to spoil any of the plot story or anything like that whatsoever, but I will give you an example. Um, basically, I was I'd met what we call uh, a toy bot, I think we called. It's 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 basically a freaking sex doll, yeah, and. Um, they're programmed to go off your subconscious what your needs are and you know what what your, your feelings are and this that and the other and before i knew it i realized that my, my my character was being psychologically evaluated and rather than be here for whatever reasons i was being evaluated during this mission and it was very very i don't know i thought it was very very clever how they'd done it and it was just basically a little bit of the game that lasted around there a minute and a half and then that was it, it was over. And yet these small little experiences exist all over Night City. It's, it's amazing, it really is. I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. Um, there's that and then there's like, you know, the fun you can have in this game. There's so many freaking toys in this game that are fun, it's unbelievable. Uh, you've got all different types of weapons and all sorts of diff different shapes and sizes but at the moment the things I'm having fun with the most have got to be the smart weapons I really am enjoying smart weapons being able to lock onto certain enemies watch them jump into cover, aim your gun in the air diagonally at an angle nowhere near them letting off some rounds and watching them rounds fly right round the corner and bam straight round with cover in it in the enemy um, you can fire through cover with some really hard hitting um, weapons as well like sniper rifles just shoot straight through the cover and blow a guy's brain clean out one thing I didn't expect with this was the RPG elements like clothes you know you find t-shirts and it's like this t-shirt has an armor value of 10 and then you'll find the same t-shirt and it's got the armor value of 30 and then you'll find a ballistic vest that's got the armor value of 5 and it's like uh, I, I really that 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 in any video game is really annoying for me. I've seen it in so many games before in the past, you know, where you pick up the same gun over and over and over and over. And what I recognize in Cyberpunk 2077 so far is it's utterly pointless in spending money, um, buying weapons, buying clothing, buying, because clothing, you know, classes as armor, uh, buying vehicles, buying cybernetic upgrades and things like that. Um, it's it's pointless at the moment unless you're getting them very very cheaply and you know they boost up your stats a little bit because each time you buy one you're going to level up and then you're going to have access to a, an upgrade and then another upgrade and then another upgrade and that's money you're wasting and you don't get the same money back for when you sell an item so at the end of the day you're just funneling away money slowly as you're leveling up leveling up leveling up so i'm not bothering with that i'm just going to wait until i'm at a certain point where i'm thinking right this is too good to be true we've got some legendary here i'm buying i'll have i'll have that i'll obtain that whatever but yeah the whole rpg element to um a lot of video games like this really put me off It'd be a hell of a lot better, in my opinion, if it was more of a straight-up combat base. You get shoot and shot in the head once, you're dead. Yeah, or with it being a cyberpunk's will, you know, you could probably take a couple of shots to the face, depending on um, what face plates and so on and so forth you've got, or your enemies have got. But at the end of the day, yeah, I'm more into them type of games. But still, at the end of the day, you get some decent firefights, you get some good action, so on and so forth. And like I said, there's a hell of a lot more toys for you to play with. Uh, there's some fun ones like you can have prosthetic arms and they open up and you've got blades that come out of them you can have one where one pr your prosthetic arm um, is basically a built in rocket launcher just firing rockets off and I think it affects your stamina like you've got infinite rockets somehow you freaking producing these things and it's your sa stamina that's depleting as you're firing them but then uh, my favourite has got to be the uh, cable it's like a um, a micro cable like this nanite energy cable weapon and it's basically like a um, piano string you know what assassins use to uh, strangle people it's that but it's high energy 
and you can throw it around you can flip it around all sorts of stuff start going through people like a knife through butter so with things like that, i'm having a hell of a lot of fun with uh, the skill trees and leveling up system is phenomenal there's a hell of a lot um i've yet to really fully get a grip of you know what your cap is because i'm not going online and trying to spoil it something i'd rather f see for myself so when it comes to cap limit things like that you know i've yet to see what all your limits are if there are any but looking at it people are out there doing certain builds so i don't think you can actually make one massive build using all the uh attributes skills and so on and so forth but still some of the things you can do on this game is brilliant um i really love the um how would you call it now substitute well subterfuge infiltration you know things like that i love being stealthy and sneaky in games like this so at the moment my character i'm trying to build him up to be like um a net running ninja you know somebody who's literally undetectable he can hack into almost anything uh, all his like you know he's stealthy he's a stealthy blah 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 you know you know what i'm about i'm trying to get down that road with my guy at the moment but yeah um some of the problems with this game now what we ended up seeing in these trailers in these gameplay footage um this that and the other what we've shown before the game was released this is one of the things that I thought was naughty about CD Projekt because at the end of the day they've been working now for seven years on this and seven years ago six years ago four years ago five years ago three years ago we didn't know about the PS5 and these developers didn't either until the dev kits started coming out and they were circulating here there and everywhere so for all that time this game is supposed to be out for PS4 and Xbox yeah, it's supposed to be for the last gen because we're now on the ne the next gen. We're on the now gen, I guess, which is PS5. So this game wasn't developed for PS5, and you know the Xbox equivalent. So what we saw, you know, what we were seeing in these trailers and this, that, and the other, anybody in the right mind would assume that's what we were getting for this console. Yeah, people are saying, but the console's old and outdated, and it's like, yeah, but that's what this game was created for. They never knew about the PS4, uh, PS5 and things like that. They never knew about the next gens that were coming out. And what we were seeing in these trailers and what we're seeing on our screens are two different things. You know, the lighting's off, the texturing's off. Uh, this, that, and the other. Like I say, I've never come across anything game-breaking, but I've come across a few things that have been eyebrow-raising, all right? Um, AI being a bit stupid. Um, there's been instances where I'm getting into firefights and I pull my weapon out and my, my gun's invisible and then it slowly renders in um there's been nuisances that's it you know they're not major they're, there's minor things that have been happening um blue screen yeah i blue screen on everything do you know what i mean i've got like sh i've got stranded deep which is like seven gig single player a non-online game i'll play that for two hours on a goddamn ps4 and blue screen it's just some of that happens and this playstation's actually not that old i think it's like two month old now my mate around the corner he's got one as well we both have the same trouble do not matter what game you're playing you're gonna blue screen one way or another it's like freaking agent smith and inevitability so oh, it's a matrix joke i'm tired but um yeah basically so people will be going on our oh, blue screen while i'm playing that game mate you blue screen while you're playing anything so you know where where's that coming from all of a sudden i don't know um so yeah at the end of the day my overall opinion for you my advice would be um try and watch as many videos out there as you can that are not going to spoil the game for you story wise um the if you've got friends in your friends list you're on ps4 get them to do a bit of share play um i think you can do similar on xbox i'm not too sure but i wouldn't knock this game before you try it it's as simple as that i can see patches coming out in the future improving graphics and various gameplay this that and the other but also something else i'm more interested in is not only future dlc which we know is coming and judging by anything the game is like you know when it comes to stories and depth and content and so on and so forth i actually cannot wait for any dlc whatsoever to come out for this game i'm going to try and drill as much of the main story side quests gigs so on and so forth that i can explore as much of night city as i can before dlcs are even bothered with hopefully but um also more than anything what i'm interested in is a rumor that's been circulating about 
multiplayer and to be honest the multiplayer would be pretty decent in Night City if they made like you know you kept your single player game and you did what GTA did and uh, Red Dead did and, did and eventually come out with an online version of it that would be brilliant just don't be greedy with it like Rockstar are. so um, at the moment yeah I'm really really enjoying this game I've yet to come out I have yet to see anything that's putting me off playing it and I, I just can't turn myself away but that's just me at the end of the day just don't knock it till you try it that's what I say so that's the video thanks for watching um, I hope you enjoyed it as always you can hit that notification bell um, subscribe to the channel you'll get notifications from YouTube each time our videos goes live now before I do end up um, stopping the video I do want people out there to be aware if you buy this game and you are planning on streaming it there are two things you need to be aware of this game does contain copyrighted music so there's a good chance you'll end up with a DMCA fortunately for us there is an option to turn off any copyrighted content so I suggest you do that also there are a lot of titties in this game and last time I was streaming it I found that out the hardware um, so luckily there is also an option for that as well so if I was you if you're planning on getting this game and streaming it turn off um, copyright music and turn off nudity and that way you'll end up with less, less Twitch staff angry at you and YouTube staff and more good fun. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. As always, good gaming out there.